Hello again, and welcome to the second video uh, dealing with time in Power BI. Uh, the first video was about modeling time and some best practices there, and so this one we're going to talk about measuring time. So once you have um, either duration columns or date and time columns in your tables and your model, uh, how do you get your results? Um, so in the first video of this series, and I'll put the link in the description, um, I talked about how, you know, dates behind the scenes are just integers, you know, relative to December 30th, 1899, and, and date times and times are just decimal numbers relative uh, to this time shown here. Uh, the best practice is to convert date time columns to date if you don't need to do any kind of time analysis. If you do, the best practice is to split your date and time columns. Um, it is possible to create duration columns where you're subtracting uh, one date and time from another. Uh, you can do that either in the query editor or with DAX, but in this video I'll show you you don't need to do that at all. Um, and again, reduce your you can keep your file size a, a little smaller um, by not doing that. Um, throughout the points I'll show today, again, definitely you can use measures instead of creating duration columns and you know the key point here is just to treat uh, dates and times and date time columns uh, like the integers and, and decimal numbers that they are and can really simplify your DAX and give you a lot of flexibility. Um, I do see some people try to format um, their duration columns as text inside the, the column uh, which really makes it really hard to, to aggregate things uh, when it's in that format. Um, when I mention that, I'm not talking about custom format strings in which the data are actually stored as um, integers or decimals and you display them different ways. That's just a formatting thing and that's, that's a good, good thing to do. Um, I did want to give a quick shout out to Ed Hansbury. Um, I saw something uh, posted from him uh, about the performance benefits you get by uh, when, you, when you subtract two dates instead of using the date diff uh, function. Uh, at the day level, you can just use the INT function and, you know, basically subtract these two things that are integers behind the scenes, and then use the integer function uh, to express that as an integer. Um, he saw a big uh, performance benefit by going that approach. Uh, similarly, you can subtract two uh, date time columns if you decide to keep date time columns, and you can use the fixed uh, function to retrieve a decimal from that out to the desired level of precision. Um, in this case, you know, six would be good to get it out to the seconds place. Um, but again, you should use less than that if, if you don't need second level um, precision. The other thing I see out there is people will use date diff and then they'll have, you know, some delta, you know, two date times here. And then they'll do that at the second granularity. And then they'll set about doing a whole bunch of variables to calculate how many hours that is and days and minutes and seconds and then compile that all again at the back end um, in their return and uh, hopefully in this video you'll see an alternative way to do this that, that I prefer. Um, but the big takeaway is again do your expression first while it's a, a number behind the scenes and then format it at the end and, and there's a bunch of options uh, possible. Um, and then briefly I'll just show you, you know, calculation groups are great um, and there, there's an application for those here to have uh, a way to dynamically select which uh, time format you want to use. Um, so before we get into it, I just want to remind you, if you're learning from these videos, please follow me on Twitter and subscribe to the Hoosier BI YouTube channel uh, so that you stay up to date with these videos as they come out. All right. Um, let me just introduce our, our data real quick. In the first video of the series, we made um, a few tables. Uh, one here is just uh, the 10 days table, and this was just to demonstrate the file size impact of you know, keeping stuff as date times versus um, splitting it out into dates and times. Or, you know, this is at the second level, even better to go to the nearest hour. Or if you can't do that, to go to the nearest minute. And there are two ways to do this. And, you know, if you just look real quickly here, um, you know, this one has 864,000 distinct values. Uh, but if you split it up, you know, the dates is, is very small. Again, this is only 10 days and the time is only 86,000. So, you know, by storing um, your columns with much less granularity, you reduce your file size and can improve your performance as well. So, so this is one table. Again, um, 10 days worth of um, date times at a one second interval. 
And then there's two similar tables here. One, um, activities, it's just 100 rows of data where I have these randomly generated start times and stop times. Um, and then um, I had calculated um, the delta between these using a custom column in M. And then I also showed you can do it with DAX with the, the fixed function uh, that I mentioned earlier. Um, and again, I would recommend you don't generate uh, duration columns like this and we just use uh, a measure to, to get our result. But if you do do it, you know, it, it, it's possible. All right, so let's uh, jump over and talk about formatting things. So what's shown here is, um, again, this is just a reminder of what our table looks like. Um, and again, I would recommend you don't have date time columns combined. You split them out. But some of these calculations are, are still using this just because um, I know a lot of people still keep date times. And what I'm about to show you can work with date, time, or date, or time columns. It's all good. Um, so I put this at the bottom here because there's going to be a big DAX expression that I pull up here just to show you the different formatting options. So if I put that up in the, the bar here, um, all these, the, you know, this expression can actually be very short, and I just have all these variations on the theme just as a way to demonstrate what's possible. So um, you certainly could have a measure like this and then dynamically choose um, which one you display at the bottom. I'm just going to start with uh, referencing one of the ones up here, which is just the raw result. So in this case, I'm just setting one variable that's a date time where I go to the lowest value and then the highest value. And so therefore, we know the difference between those two should be one second less than, than 10 days. Uh, and then and so in this raw result, all I'm doing is subtracting you know, DT1 uh, sub and subtracting DT from, from DT2. Um, and so you can see if I if I return that and I'm just returning the raw result, I get that result in a um, date format. Um, and uh, so, so January 8th. So if you go from December 30th, right, that's our that's our 10 days. Uh, but that's not very interesting, and certainly we wouldn't aggregate um, date time like that. So you know you can do other other formulas here. But again, behind the scenes, that's just a, a decimal number waiting to be um, formatted the right way. So if I just go this just full days, um, I can I can return this one. And in this case, um, I'm just returning the the integer from the difference between these two things, right? So I so I get nine. So because it's nine point something something very close to ten, it just takes the integer part of it, and we don't get the uh, we don't get a value of 10 there. Uh, this one here, where I can use the round function instead of the int function, I can take this and I can round it to zero decimal places, and I'll get a result of 10. All right. Um, all right. So that's not, you know, very interesting. But but again, that's just a real simple way that I've taken date time columns. Um, done some calculation so any expression up here would work if it results in a date or a date time um, and then but if we get more interesting you know you can just do you know days as a as a decimal so if you know since your result is already a decimal number behind the scenes you know you can just display it as such you know and then your result is in days you don't if you don't need special formatting for that um, but then these last three are the ones that I, th I think are most interesting um, that you can, again, take that raw result and use the format function and then give this uh, string here. Um, remember, since uh, they've updated this a few months ago, that instead of MM here for minutes, um, M, capital M, capital M is months. So they've adopted this um, syntax here where NN is minutes now. Um, and so this approach can work, you know, if your result is is less than 24 hours. So which I've uh, shown here, and in this case, you know, we know our result is going to be less. Um, sorry, our result um, is is only going to show the 
hours, minutes, and seconds. So the nine days is missing from here, right? So our result here is more than 24 hours. Um, so therefore, this could be a misleading result. So I, I don't recommend using this one unless you know um, it's going to be less than that. Um, and if you want to show um, everything, you can use this other function where I'm taking the integer to get those number of days and I'm giving it a format string of you know zero and a colon here so that the number of days will will always show and if it would happen to be more than nine days or have you know even hundreds of days um, that would show here using this format and then I'm using this same part here um, to get us the rest of the information so you know this this would work for any value and if you wanted a, a different variation on that or when you said I don't want to see the days I just want to have hours only you know you could do that and then I'm just taking that integer number, multiplying it by 24 for 24 hours in a day, and you can get just the hours, minutes, seconds version of that. So, so again, quite a few options there. But notice I didn't do you know date diff with seconds, and then go about counting days and hours and minutes and seconds. Um, it's a much simpler approach here. So again, don't let the size of this expression fool you. You know, I showed you. Um, multiple variations on the theme and so depending on which one you needed um, you could just choose choose that one and you'd have a much shorter expression all right so let's go to the next page just show a couple other things um, of how to calculate durations so our other table had 100 rows of these activities with randomly generated start and stop times um, and so you know there's um, a few ways you could calculate things. Um, this matrix here is shown. I've got the measure showing on rows so that it displays like this. Um, but I had generate a custom column in M. And so, again, you can use a um, function, you know, an approach syntax that I just showed before. So this is a measure that is just summing up, you know, that um, M duration column. Uh, and then use a very similar approach to come up with, you know, days, hours, minutes, seconds. So, so one of those later uh, variable formats that I showed. Um, same thing, doing it off of the DAX column. Very similar expression here. Um, again, I don't think you should use um, either of those. Um, this is a way, this total duration sum X, this is a way you could do it um, without columns at all. So in this case, I'm actually just doing a sum X over the activities table and I'm just on every row as I iterate through I'm subtracting the start time from the stop time um, and and then again doing that same kind of format right so I'm doing my aggregation while it's still integers and decimals behind the scenes and then I'm just formatting that decimal result in days um, into my desired output all right so again this is just showing you that you can get um, the same results for for those three approaches now in the first video I told you that the best way to model your data would be to not keep dot date time together but to split it out and to have an activity ID and then you know splitting out start date from start time and stop date from stop time and this last one is just to show you um, what the DAX expression might look like for that so again, you're doing a sum X this time, and this is the way I would definitely, I would encourage you to model it like this and then to analyze it like this. Um, again, we're doing a sum X, and in this case, we're going over, iterating over this table, and then on every row, I can just um, use all four columns, so I can, I can add the date and time together, and then I could subtract, and notice I got parentheses here so that these get added together before we subtract the start and stop time and then again I'm using that same approach to format it with days hours minutes seconds and this just shows you I get uh, the same exact result okay um, so again format your if you need to do time analysis model your data so that date and times are separate and then you don't need to generate duration columns um, you can do it just with a DAX expression uh, leveraging you know an iterator function like this uh, and just doing this type of, uh, of math uh, to get your result. And then the last thing I want to show is I'm a big fan of calculation groups now. Um, it took me a while to get going on those. 
Um, but those same expressions that I showed you, all those different variations on the theme for the variables to return different formats, you could actually just um, load those up into um, a calculation items inside a calculation group and apply it to any, any result. So in this case, I have um, just this total duration function where, again, I'm just doing just the raw result part so I don't have all those other things through the formatting because I've built that into the, the calculation group. And so this is no format. And again, I can then sh demonstrate all those different ways as before, but it's much easier. And now that it's a, a calculation group, um, I can have that as part of my model and then I can use it with lots of different measures without having to, um, you know, repeat that, that same format expression uh, in each of those cases. So, like, you know, calculation groups make everything better and I'm using them more and more and definitely um, encourage you to do the same. All right. So that's, uh, that's about measuring time. Um, a reminder to please subscribe to my Hoosier BI YouTube channel if you're learning from these videos and follow me on Twitter. Thank you.